Hello, my name is Magnus Feuer and I'm the co-founder and CTO of a company called Feuer Labs. And today we want to show you a cool little demo that we did to show what we can do with our Exosense device stack, which is an open source framework written in Erlang for embedded programming. And the purpose of the demo is to show what we can do with firmware over the air and also uh, what Erlang can do in an embedded soft real-time system. So for this demo we have a couple of bits and pieces of toys to play with. First of all, we have the trusty old AR drone 2.0, which is a stock piece of unit that we bought uh, in a toy store. We haven't modified the hardware at all. The only thing we've done is that we wiped the software from the Linux machine inside it, and we put our own control software, flight control software on it, which is written as an Exosense device application in Erlang. So it's all Erlang running inside here right now. Second, we have my trusty old laptop. Uh, which I'm running a remote pilot program on, also written as an Exosense device app. Um, we left Exosense server out of it today because it's out of scope, but that's a separate demo, which is also going to be very cool. And the Exosense uh, pilot program, the, the remote pilot program, is reading this joystick, which is a standard gaming joystick with a USB port. Now, the laptop is connected to the drone through a Wi-Fi network. So the drone publishes an access point and the laptop is connected to it. And as soon as I move this, lab, this joystick, uh, the remote pilot program on the laptop is going to catch that, send it over as UDP IP to the, our flight control software here on Exosense device, and that will get incorporated into the, control, into the mobile control algorithm. Very easy. So let's uh, do a takeoff and see what things look like. It turned out that the drone motors uh, completely drowned out my voice when I tried to explain what I was doing here. So we have to do this with a voiceover. As you can see, the drone is now airborne, but it does have a problem. There is a glitch in the code that cuts out the motors at irregular intervals, making the drone fall down a bit. The motor come back online, and the drone's uh, flight control system catches the fall, corrects it, but the next motor cutoff will make it fall again, etc. And if we have a look at the code, we can see that th this bug, or this glitch, is actually do artificially introduced as a bug, as a part of this, this demo. And here's the code that uh, contains the glitch, and the actual cutout line is right here where we set the pulse width modulation of the motors to 0 0.01, which is idling. And we can fix this quite easily by simply commenting out the code like that, and then bring in the correct code, which is down here. And this line is, uh, deactivates the glitch completely, and this line sets the motor speeds uh, for all four motors to the correct value, which is stored as a tuple in M2. Save, bring up the shell, do a quick build, and now we have fixed the bug on our build box, but we need to transfer it over to the drill. And for, to do that, we have a very simple transfer script that simply FTPs up to the drone, the uh, corrected beam file, the binary Erlang file, and then moves that file to the correct position. So let's execute that. And there we go. The file is now stored up uh, on the drone in the correct position, but it has not yet been activated. And, but we can activate it by pressing the uh, thumb button on the joystick, which I will do right now. And as you can see, the flight of the drone immediately stabilizes and the glitch is gone, the motor is no longer cut out. And all this was done uh, while the program was active and there was no software restart whatsoever. So let's land the drone and have a look at what we actually did. Thank you. Okay, so now that we've landed the drone, let's go through what actually happened. First of all, we downloaded and replaced the software with our own flight control software as an Exosense device application. Once it got airborne, we saw that there was a glitch in the software, uh, which is, was due to a bug that killed off the motors. We had a look at the code, we fixed the glitch in the code, we did a build, and we transferred a new image over to the drone as it was flying in the air. However, it wasn't activated until we explicitly told it to activate itself by pressing the fire button. Once that happened, the uh, drone upgraded, the, the flight control software upgraded itself as it was executing without an application restart, which meant that all the variables, all the flat trim, all the PID controllers retained the original state. And the only effect that we saw was that the whole thing stabilized in the air as the glitch was removed. And the whole upgrade took almost exactly 10 milliseconds. 
So this shows that not only can we do firmware over the air very elegantly with an exercise device, but also that we can upgrade the application as it's executing, as a so-called hot upgrade. And this has huge implications in various industries, such as automotive, etc., where you now can do upgrades in a much more safe and reliable way. So that pretty much concludes what we have to show you today. Please log on to the forlabs.com website or have a look at our open source repo at GitHub uh, at the address that you can see here. Thank you very much and have a nice day.